Welcome to the Momming with Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Hargrove. On this show, I help moms discover Jesus in their motherhood. I hope this show encourages you in your mom journey. Enjoy the message. So today's message is titled, When Good Isn't Easy. Oh man, even that title, you know, just makes me think like, when good isn't easy. You know, how many times have you said, I'm going to start going to bed earlier so I can get some rest and I just need to, so that I can feel better in the morning. You know, I'm just going to go to bed earlier. How many times have you said that? Right. And maybe you, you're like disciplined and going to sleep. So rock on girl. I'm so proud of you. But in motherhood, so many of us know that that's the struggle because we want alone time, but then we're also exhausted. Right. And maybe you said, okay, I'm going to bed early. And you decided this because it was good for you, right? But even though that plan sounds oh so simple, it's not that easy. And before you know it, it's midnight. You're still scrolling. You're munching on those new pickle chips you found at HEB. And the next day is already intimidating you. And you're like, oh my goodness, tomorrow's such a big day. What am I going to do? And I know that this is a silly, silly example, but the pursuit of wasn't of what is good isn't always easy, right? Living the good life doesn't just fall into our lap. Reaping good results doesn't just happen by waiting for it. Reaping good most times comes by sacrifice, hard work, intention, consistency, dedication, and simply never giving up. Those pickle chips go hard. We have some right now in our pantry and I cannot stop. <laughs> and hold on, let me, uh, I had to zoom um, in a little bit because my eyes could not see my words, right? Okay, so reaping good results requires so much discipline, dedication, and never giving up. And to, for example, to achieve your dream home, some of us might be sitting in our dream home and some of us are awaiting our dream home, right? Right. But in order to achieve that dream home, you must put in what? Countless hours of work. Maybe it's your business or your job. You must earn money, make wise moves with your finances. And finally, one day it could very well come to pass. And that is good. And let's talk about this to birth a beautiful baby into this world. Now that is a good thing. That is a good thing that life brings. But all of us here know it isn't easy. Can I get an amen, right? From the swollen feet to peeing a billion times each night, to barely being able to walk or wobble, to the crazy emotions and hormonal shifts, to throwing up, all of those things. I mean, good things aren't always easy, okay? Having a healthy and successful marriage doesn't just exist. It takes two people putting in selfless love and work in many areas. Easy, no, but worth it, yes. But what do we do when we get weary and tired? When the road too good is sometimes too much to bear, or at least it seems. And I'm telling you that I know the road to good isn't easy. That's what I have discovered. But I have found that time and time again, it is worth it. Because what's on the other side of good, guys? What is on the other flip side of good? It's simply bad, okay? I'm not trying to be negative here, but the opposite of good is bad, right? We learned that in elementary opposites. And bad doesn't always appear bad. That's the tricky thing, or at least right away. Bad takes time to develop, but one day it pops up when you least expect it. And all along, we didn't realize what even happened when we neglect our health. We don't notice any negative repercussions right away, but over time it's being developed until one day we see the results of our neglect, which typically isn't good, right? When we neglect when we neglect, we will see the accurate results. What we sow, we will reap. So let's take good care of the good things in our life, right? And I want you to look around even right now, wherever you're at, okay? You might have a kid having saliva all over you. You might be washing dishes. Maybe you're able to sit down right now, but look around. What is good in front of you? Is it the table you're sitting at? the bed you're laying in, the kids that you get to rock to sleep, even if it takes hours, your family, your home, yourself, your marriage, your career. And then think about what are some areas in life that might need improvement? We all have them, okay? All can be turned around for good by the grace of God and his leading. But again, good isn't easy though, but it's worth it. And you know who we can ask about that truth is Jesus, right? He 
died on the cross for us so we could have an eternal relationship with God through him. And this was good, beyond good. But was it easy? Obviously, no. So much that he prayed to God, asking him to spare him of this good plan. He said, God, if, it, if you can take this away from me, but not my will, your will be done. You know why he chose to go through with it because he knew the result of his sacrifice and work and pain was nothing short of good. And that good was you. You were worth it. You were the good thing he was trying to achieve by his struggle. And so we are talking about today when good isn't easy. All right. We have three points that we're going to dissect as we talk about this good thing. The first one is take care of what is good. The second one is fight for what is good. And the last one is just don't give up. Okay. And so let's talk about first, take care of what is good. And James 1 17, it says every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of the heavenly light, who does not change like shifting shadows. So everything in your life that is good comes down from the father. God has given each of us here many good things. And yes, all of us right now might have our share of burdens, okay? They all look different, maybe some the same, but there is also good in our lives, and I know this. If God gives us something, we are in charge of what we do with it, right? And the word says that every good gift is given to us from the Father. So knowing this, should we be intentional of taking good care of the good things he's given us? Have you ever heard the saying, okay, bye, take care of yourself? I mean, so many times you might even say that, and it's just kind of a natural response when you're saying bye to someone, take care of yourself. Maybe as you're saying goodbyes, you know, this is something you say too. It's simply, it, it's a simple saying, but what does it really mean? It means be intentional and careful with how you care for yourself because you're valuable. If that was um, elaborated more, for example, if you're, your grandma, maybe she passed you down some fine china and you probably want to take good care of it and preserve it because it means a lot to you. You might even buy a whole china cabinet just to store it in beautifully rather than serving your kids chicken nuggets on it, right? Because it could easily be broken. In the same way, we should carefully care for the good things in our life. And you might be listening right now thinking, okay, well, obviously, hello, like I take good care of my stuff, girlfriend. Okay. But sometimes it isn't super, it's, it's sometimes yeah. it's actually super easy to overlook and take for granted and neglect the best things in our life. The good things. I know for sure here, all of you take good care of the things that you've been given. But what I'm speaking to, including myself is the things that we don't realize that we take for granted for and neglect to see that some of these good things like, Ooh, could we take better care of it? For instance, our marriage, we might think all is good, but sometimes when we dig just a little deeper, we might need a little extra love and care, maybe a little more dates, nights, a little maintenance, a little tune up, a little check-in, you know, maybe some attention. And I spoke with a friend a long time ago. We met up and went to Chipotle and we were catching up and she's such a sweet woman. And I, you know, always looked up to her and we were just talking and she, she recently shared with me that she has gone through a divorce and I was just kind of listening to her and encouraging her because her heart was broken. You know, she was just really going through it understandably because that's nothing easy to experience. And her heart was hurting and she began to share some of her story and one thing that she said that stood out to me the most that I often reflect on to remind myself and ensure that I'm working on this area of my life. And it was something she was trying to give advice. Like if you can learn anything, learn this from my experience. And she told me nothing specific happened, Lauren. We just grew too comfortable with each other. And I remember thinking, what? I was kind of like, what do you mean? Like, like that's what caused the divorce. She's like, yeah, there was no adultery. There was no this, there was no that. We weren't like mean to each other. We just grew too comfortable with each other. And something good faded away from simply, from simple comfortability and neglect. Sometimes we simply don't give enough care to the good things in our life. And before we know it, these things become negatively affected. 
what what that in a sense meant is you know they loved each other but they stopped giving the intention and attention that they needed to have a healthy thriving marriage whether it's date nights or communication or intention or intimacy who knows what that's not my area to talk about but what she encouraged me to always think of and what i'm sharing with you is sometimes it's not the obvious things that we're not taking care of but the things that we don't realize and you know what about our children's life all of obviously all of us here we love our kids so much it hurts all of us here are trying our best in fact we're doing a phenomenal job okay but how many times do our days just collide we get caught up in the routines and the busyness and the hectic vibes and we're worn out and tired and before you know it we're disconnected to the most important years that we have with our kids before you know it time has elapsed and our kids are moving out of the house like the thought of that brings me to tears, okay? It sounds dramatic, but it's not always what we do for our kids, which we all do a lot here, but it's how we do it. It's a saying that Homer always says in different, my husband Homer, um, um, this is a saying that he always says. It's like one of his phrases. I don't know how to word it, right? Um, but something that always sticks to me, he's like, it's not what you do, but how you do it. It's not always what we do, but how we do it that matters. Not just what we do to love them, but how we love them that really matters. The years that we have with them in our home, let's not only take good care of them and their physical needs, but take good care of their precious little hearts and the little memories to be made because right now we are their whole world. And remember that you yourself is also something to be considered so good. You, not only your marriage or your children or your career, or all these things, but you are also another thing that God has given you is good. Your body, your health, your mind, your heart, all of this is good. And did you realize it's all worth taking care of? That you have been given one life, one body, one heart, one mind, and you should do everything that you can to ensure it's taken good care of. You know why? Because you deserve it. You're worth it. And I know that you're busy taking care of so many other people and, and the, to think of taking care of yourself, like, dude, I'm just too exhausted to take care of myself. I get it. Okay. Because same, but I encourage you to stop for a second and just take care of yourself. Okay. Don't feel guilty. Just don't go get coffee alone. Go have a fun girls night. Go get your nails done. Go buy some, those new pants you've been wanting for months. And you're like, Ooh, like I'll just wait. No, you want to feel good in your pants. Okay, go buy that new favorite shirt that you want to wear every week. Like find that new favorite shirt. Just go and do it and stop saying, oh, I should have just bought the kids shoes. Yes, the kids probably need new shoes. Okay, but you are worth it. I know those are material things, guys, but even your spiritual life, your heart, all of these things are worth taking care of. And in Proverbs 27, 23 through 27, it says this, be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention to your herds for riches do not endure forever. And a crown is not secure for all generations. When the hay is removed and the new growth appears and the grass from the hills are gathered in, the lambs will provide you with clothing and the goats with the price of a field. You will have plenty of goat's milk to feed your family and to nourish your female servants. And you might be hearing this and saying, I don't have flocks. I don't have none of that. What are you talking about? It's, it's, if you're referencing this verse in today's life, I love what it says at the beginning. Be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Be sure that you know the condition of your heart, of your family, of the things that are valuable, whether it's relationships, your relationship with God, your possessions, your own home, your car. Be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention to your herds. Herds back then were, you know, their, their source of food, their source of income. Be care, give careful attention because you never know what, when you give good attention to these things, it will end up taking care of you, if that makes sense, right? And so it is important to give careful attention, to know the condition of these things that are precious in your life and take care of what is good. And I didn't add this verse in here, but there's another scripture in Song of Solomon. And it says, um, it says, watch out for the little foxes because they will, um, they will ruin the vineyard. I need to find it for you and send it. I can tell y'all soon song of Solomon. It might be song of Solomon three, but what it's saying, it's giving this illustration is that there's this beautiful vineyard and it says, be careful because the little foxes can ruin the whole vineyard. 
So something that is good, this whole vineyard, sometimes it's the little things that come in, the neglect, the comfortability, the taking for granted, all these things that come in that end up ruining something that is so good. And the Bible says in Song of Solomon, like, be careful, catch the little foxes now. Don't just let the little foxes come in like, oh, they're so cute. Before you know it, it's all ruined. No, catch them now, deal with them now and protect what is good. Okay, moving on to the next point, right? Fight for what is good. All right, so let's talk about fighting. In 1 Timothy 6, 11 through 12, it says, but you, man of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Let me say that again. Fight the good. You hear that? We're talking about good today. The good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. And when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So what? There is a fight that is good. Sometimes you got to fight to attain what is good. Okay. And oh boy, is that hard, right? You know, what's easier to do is to throw up your hands, be passive and allow things to just happen to you. It's easier, but it's actually just easier in the present, but it makes things harder in the future. There are so many good things that have been thrown away because people aren't willing to fight for it. And it's sad to see. But we all know that the fight is the hardest part. Marriages, family relationships, careers, health, dreams, our children, and our faith in God is worth the fight. And so many times those things are thrown into the trash. But I truly believe that all of us here have fight in us, okay? All of us here have been given a warrior spirit, a victorious spirit, an enduring spirit, a fighting spirit. And why do I believe this? And why am I telling you all this today? Because in Romans 8, 11, it says, and if the same, if, if, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. So what is that saying? That the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is inside of us? Say what? Do you realize that we literally have the very same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living inside of you? Like, hello, these are facts, okay? And how many of us are truly tapping into this power? This spirit literally took the keys from hell. That's what the Bible says. Took the keys from hell and death and said, nah, homie. And in Corinthians, it says that after that, it says, oh, death, where is your sting? It was talking back to the enemy. It was talking back to the en the to hell and saying, oh, death, where is your sting? You can't sting no more. You can't destroy no more. The spirit fought for our salvation and it's inside of us. So I think that we have the strength given by Christ to fight the good fight of faith. We have the power to fight for our relationship with Christ, to be bold and stand for Christ when everyone else around us is mocking him, slandering his name, we have the fight to fight for our children's salvation and the and purpose when the world is trying to steal their innocence and natural love for God. We have to fight for the marriage that God has joined together and refuse to allow the enemy to divide. We have the power to fight for our health and well-being and live this life to the fullest with joy and peace of God. We have the power to fight for our loved ones in prayer, believing that they will find Christ and breakthrough in every area. We have the fight to lay all of our offenses down at the cross and forgive even the toughest offender. We have this fight within us. So let's not waste another day allowing the enemy to try to steal what Jesus died to give us. We have to rise up and fight the good fight because it's all worth it. So sometimes what is good is not easy. And there is a fight to get us from here to what is good. It doesn't just happen sometimes. And here's the thing is you have the fight within you. 
Hello, beautiful souls. This community thrives on shared stories, laughter, tears, and the strength that we draw from God's word and each other. As we navigate the symphony of motherhood together, our mission is to uplift, support, and empower every mom listening. To keep our sanctuary vibrant and accessible, we are reaching out for your support. Whether you want to become a monthly supporter or by giving a one-time donation of the price of your favorite latte, your generosity helps us continue to bring content that touches the heart, nurtures the soul, and strengthens our faith and fellowship as moms. If our conversations have been a companion to you in your moments of need, joy, your reflection, consider contributing to our cause. Just visit laurenahargrove.com and find the support tab. It's quick, simple, and your support means the world to us and to mothers everywhere. Thank you for being a part of our journey, for sharing your highs and lows, and for mommy with Jesus. Now let's return to today's episode. And so let's end on our last point, guys, and that is don't give up. Very simple, right? I don't know if any of you are here today and you're like, I'm going to give up. I feel it. Or maybe you're like, no, girl, I feel good. I'm feeling motivated. Wherever you're at, God's speaking to your heart. And in Galatians 6, 7 through 10, it says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. Okay. There it is again. Good for at the proper time at the right time, we will reap the harvest. If we don't give up you catching this. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. So let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time. We will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Now, one of the hardest parts of pursuing all that is good is staying the course. That is the hardest part. Um, And for those of you who know or don't know, I don't share this often because it's, you know, it's my personal stuff, but I sharing this example to let you know that good stuff isn't easy. Um, And for me, this is more of a, not like a super deep spiritual aspect of my life, but I feel like it has definitely been a spiritual part of that makes sense too. I have experienced hard things that have led me to good in many different areas of my life. But anyways, my point is right now is that in this season, I have been um, really, really learning a lot about my nutrition and I've been have, I've had um, a coach to help me since last September until now um, really grow in my knowledge of nutrition. And so long story short, I've had a coach that's really helped me get to my goals and goals as in fitness and nutrition. I after having my third baby, it was just, it was just crazy. It was hard. It was very difficult. And with that being said, we have been on this program together. It hasn't been super hard, but let me tell you, it hasn't been easy. It has not been easy. And one of the hardest parts of this kind of program of learning about nutrition and what you eat and calories and what blah, 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 and getting to those goals. Again, I'm not trying to get on into that. I'm not preaching that today, but my point is that the hardest part is staying the course. Okay. So many times I'm like, man, I just want to stuff my face with Oreos right now. Okay. Or eat a 30 piece wing all by myself, which I could, if I wanted to, but the good thing that I'm trying to achieve is on the other side, man. Like if I throw in the towel now, I'm never going to feel and reap the results of all of my hard work. And there's been times where I will say, I haven't wanted to give up, but I've been like, man, this is, I've cried. There was two weeks ago. I cried. Because I'm at the very end of my goal and we're working up to where it's a long story, guys. If you want to know more, let me know. But my point is, is I was like, I'm crying because this is hard, but this is so good. Does that make sense? Like, this is so good. And I haven't felt stronger or healthier or more content and nourished in my physical health than I ever had before. Even before kids, I feel so much better now, but it's required me to do the hard things that have led to the good, to be consistent and not give up when I could have, and I would have never tasted and felt the results of staying the course. And I share that to share my own humanity and my own experiences. And I know that's not like a super spiritual example. There's tons more I can share, but my point is, is it's hard. It's human nature to want to give up. And there is a middle point between sowing and reaping that is the hardest. 
For example, we may say, I truly want to connect with the church community. This is what we need. And maybe we start going for a little, little while before we know it. Weeks go by and we're like, ooh, reasons came up that trump our priorities. And we begin to feel discouraged in our faith again. Consistency is a hard one. Having priorities is hard to keep. And our culture has made it so easy to give up on good things. Our culture has promoted nothing but self-gratification. Do what feels good in the moment. Cater to your feelings first. If it's hard, don't do it, girl. Think about yourself first always. Forget everyone else. But if we follow our feelings and take the path that is always easier, it creates a life of mediocrity. It really, truly does in our faith and every other aspect. Good things don't come easy. Easy. And we all too soon give up on good things. We give on, on, we give up on our own health, our workout, our nutrition plans, because man, that's a challenge. We give up on our marriage because you know what? I'm over it. We give up on our kids because they're just too much. Mm -mm. We give up on our goals and so much more because it's just hard. But honestly, we've almost, we've been taught that in this day and age and we give up before we ever see the results. You know, when you lift weights, you, you see growth, not when you stop that specific workout, when it gets hard. So when you're lifting weights, you know, and you go like this, and you're like, oh, okay, I think I'm good. No, you see results when you go past the point of, man, that's kind of hard right there. And you push again, man, that's when you see the results. When you push past the pain and you realize you could do more than you ever thought you could. But what if the results you are looking for are on the other side of the fight? What if it's not after the first round? What if the results aren't after the second round, but they're after the third round? What if the fight is what leads you to what is good? But here's the thing that may have been harder for you to fight. Maybe this is why you're tired because maybe we've been trying to do it in our own strength. I don't know how many times I've done that. And we're feeling like we have nothing left to give. But could it be that God wants to show you something? He says, come over here and tap into my power and my strength. In Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And you may have heard this verse several times. I don't know, but really think about it. Say it to yourself. I wait a second. I can do all things through him who literally gives me strength. So right now we don't have it, but I can do it because he will give me the strength. And God is not asking you to fight for what is good with all your strength, girl, because he already knows we don't have it, but he's asking you to tap into his strength to surrender to him and to allow him to give you his power. And I can just imagine and visualize him right now. There's a match going on, the boxing ring. I don't know how it works. I don't know all the details, but I can just see it, right? And he's in your corner and you're taking a break and you're about to go from round two to round three. And you're sitting down in that corner and he's wiping the sweat from your brow. He's giving you that water, squirting it in your face. He's, he's fixing your mouth guard and he's pumping you up. He's like, you're gonna go in there. And you got this. And he's saying it's your final round. Get back in there. Fight this fight because guess what? You're going to win. You know why? Because I'm in your corner. He goes before you. He puts his hand of blessing on you. He is your strength in this time. And he's saying, you got this. Don't look to the left or to the right, but just know that you've got this because Jesus is in your corner. You think the other guy's going to win? Heck no. Jesus is in your corner and he's got you. And so don't give up. Okay, please. You are going into that third round. Don't give up. And so guys, today we talked about when good isn't easy. It isn't easy. Okay. We talked about the importance of taking care. Of what is good? The things in our life of taking good care of them, cherishing them because they are gifts from God. We talked about fighting for what is good. That sometimes there is a fight to gain what is good in our life, in our faith, in our marriage, in our kids, all of these things. And we ended by saying, don't give up. Just don't give up. And so I'm going to pray for you before we end. And I pray that if you're here today and you're like, man, like, how did you know? I don't know. God knew what our heart needed today. And if you're on the verge of giving up, maybe like not literally, but you're on the verge of mentally giving up, physically giving up whatever that looks like, or just emotionally, you're just tired. And you're just like, I just can't do this anymore. 
And today you're like, you know what, Jesus, I realize you're in my corner and I've been looking all around for relief and help. And I realize that it's you that I need to gain strength from. I don't have it within me. And if you're ready to say, you know what, Jesus, come and be my strength. And not only that, my Lord and my savior, because I can't do this by myself anymore. It's too hard. I want to pray with you. And God, I just thank you for these women here. And I thank you that God, you are in our corner, that we can gain strength from you. And God, you have given us so many good things. There are so many good things that we are sitting in and seeing and surrounded by right now. And we thank you for that. There are so many good things to come that might require us to not give up, that might require us to fight for in prayer, to fight for in sacrifice, to fight for in hard work. And God, we know that you are worth fighting for. When culture tries to drive us away from you, God, we fight to stand and never be ashamed of the gospel and never be ashamed of you because Jesus, you at the end of it all are the only thing that stands. And I just pray that you strengthen every woman here that you give them the strength that only you can give them, that you give them peace and reassurance, God, that you are in the corner and nothing is impossible with you. And I just thank you for your word and your love in Jesus name. Amen. I hope you found encouragement today. I'd love to connect with you. You can find me by following Lauren A. Hargrove on Instagram or Facebook. And before you go, can you do me a favor and leave a rating and review for this show? I would greatly appreciate it. And it would help other moms better find the show too. With that, thank you for being a part of our community today. And until next time.